क्वेश्चन नंबर 11 सेज अ ब्लॉक इज प्लेस्ड ऑन अ रफ हॉरिजॉन्टल सरफेस अ टाइम डिपेंडेंट हॉरिजॉन्टल फोर्स एफ इज इक्वल टू टू टी एक्ट्स ऑन द ब्लॉक द एक्सेलरेशन टाइम ग्राफ ऑफ ब्लॉक इज बेस्ट रिप्रेजेंटेड बाय नाउ द स्टूडेंट्स द फोर्स इज गिवन टू बी इक्वल टू टू टी लेट एस एज्यूम दैट द कोफिशिएंट ऑफ फ्रिक्शन इज म्यू डियर स्टूडेंट्स वी मस्ट एनालाइज एंड कंक्लूड दैट till the time this applied force is less than the limiting value of the frictional force the block's motion would not start and its acceleration would be zero and therefore till a certain time moment the block would have a zero acceleration after which the acceleration of the block can be written to be equal to net force by mass that will be equal to f minus limiting value of friction divided by mass which will be equal to 2t minus mu mg by m dear students we can see here acceleration is a linear function of time the only graph which meets the conditions as discussed in this question is graph as represented in option number 4 because in this graph till certain time period the acceleration of the block is zero and when the acceleration starts it is a linear function of time that is a straight line and therefore dear students the correct answer is obviously option number 4 now dear students let us proceed to the question number 12 question number 12 says a block of mass m is kept on a frictionless plank as shown in the figure if plank is pulled with a horizontal acceleration a then maximum compression in the spring is spring constant of spring is k dear students we can solve this question by applying work energy theorem in the frame of the plank however since plank is a non inertial frame we must use the concept of pseudo force the maximum compression will happen when the work done by pseudo force would be equal to the potential energy of the spring and the block would come to rest now dear students in the frame of the plank there will be a pseudo force ma on the plank in the direction as shown in the figure that is in the direction opposite to the acceleration let us assume that the block moves a distance x then the work done by the pseudo force will be ma into x and since initially the spring is unextended we can write down that the potential energy stored in the spring would be equal to half k x square on solving this equation we get x is equal to 2 ma by k dear students therefore the correct answer for this particular question is option number 3 now let us proceed to the further question which is question number 13 question number 13 says a horizontal force of 100 newton is applied to hold a block of mass 2 kg against a vertical wall as shown in the figure the coefficient of friction between the wall and the block is 0.25 the frictional force acting on the block is dear students as per the question the mass of the block is 2 kg and hence there would be a weight acting on the block vertically downward which will be equal to mg that is 20 newton there would also be a normal force that would be applied by the wall on the block which will be equal to 100 newton itself dear students in this particular question the limiting value of friction we can find out to be equal to mu n here mu is given to be equal to 0.25 on substituting the values we write 0.25 into 100 that is 25 newton the students we see that since the force that is trying to pull down the block is less than the limiting value of the frictional force the frictional force would adjust balance this 20 newton force and hence the frictional force that would act on the block would be equal to 20 newton upwards and therefore dear students the correct answer for this particular question should be option number 1 now dear students let us proceed to the question number 
क्वेश्चन नंबर 14 सेज द पोजीशन टाइम ग्राफ ऑफ अ पार्टिकल ऑफ मास 1 केजी इज एज शोन इन फिगर द इंपल्स एट टी इज इक्वल टू 2 सेकंड इज नाउ डियर स्टूडेंट्स द इंपल्स इज इक्वल टू द चेंज इन लीनियर मोमेंटम व्हिच कैन बी रिटर्न एज मास मल्टीप्लाइड बाय चेंज इन वेलोसिटी लेट अस ट्राई टू फाइंड आउट द वेलोसिटी चेंज एट टी इज इक्वल टू 2 सेकंड बिफोर 2 सेकंड्स the velocity of the particle can be calculated by calculating the slope of this graph that is if this is angle theta tan theta will be the initial speed or velocity and that would be equal to 4 divided by 2 that is 2 meter per second dear students after 2 seconds the position time graph is a straight line parallel to the time axis and hence the final velocity is equal to 0 therefore dear students we can write down the change in velocity as final velocity minus initial velocity that is 0 minus 2 which will be equal to minus 2 meter per second now the mass of the particle is 1 kg therefore delta p will be equal to 1 multiplied by minus 2 that will be equal to minus 2 kg meter per second and as the correct answer for this particular question is option number 2 now dear students let us proceed to the question number 15 question number 15 is a question based on the concept of vectors it says that five coplanar forces are acting on a particle of mass m such that the angle between any two adjacent forces is 72 degrees four forces are of magnitude f1 and one of f2 the resulting acceleration of the particle is now dear students let us try to visualize this problem by drawing a vector diagram in this particular question there are five forces let us represent each force by an arrow now dear students four of these forces are f1 and the fifth force is f2 now dear students if in this particular question in place of f2 if it would have been f1 then the resultant of all these vectors would have been zero because these all five forces which are inclined at an angle of 72 degrees with each other would have formed a closed polygon and when the vectors form a closed polygon their resultant is zero however in this particular question the fifth force is not f1 but f2 we can however use the information as discussed just before this particular information now dear students since we know that in case when all the five forces would have been f1 the resultant would have been zero we can safely conclude that the resultant of these four forces would be equal to f1 and directed in the direction opposite to the last force we can see that the resultant of this force and this force would be equal to f1 minus f2 let us write down the mod function and if we divide this total force by mass this would be our acceleration now dear students we can also write this as f2 minus f1 by m as well and therefore dear students we see that the correct answer for this particular question is question number 3 let us proceed now to the question number 